Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new Sony Xperia Z3, which is arriving just six months after the Z2. Now, the Z2 was one of my favorite phones of 2014, so the Z3 certainly stands a chance to replace it. Now, the Z3 is a pretty significant upgrade, but it's still pretty similar to the Z2. We still have a 5.2 inch 1080p LCD display, same size, same resolution, with 424 pixels per inch, but this time it's quite a bit brighter with that triluminous technology, which makes the display very colorful and vivid, kind of similar to an AMOLED display. We also have a much thinner and lighter design than the Z2. It's also simpler and more rounded, so it feels a little nicer in the hand. We also have thinner bezels, and generally speaking, the phone just feels more comfortable to handle than before. Now, we still have the same 20.7 megapixel camera sensor on the back, but with new optics and a new image processing engine. Now, just like the Z2, we have front-facing stereo speakers, which is still a rarity in the market today, and these are also waterproof. In fact, the water resistance rating of this phone has been bumped up to IP68, which means this can be submerged in one 0.5 meters of water for up to 30 minutes. Now in terms of internal specs, most of it is carried over. We do have a Snapdragon 801 clocked at 2.5 gigahertz instead of 2.3, but we still have three gigs of RAM. Now the battery has decreased in size from 3200 milliamp hours to 3100. That's still a fairly large battery. All right, so let's go ahead and crack into this box. I just have to cut these seals along the bottom here. All right, so let's go ahead and lift the lid here. And there we go, there is our white Sony Xperia Z3. This is also available in black, copper, and a green color. So let me go ahead and lift that out here. So there you can see it's wrapped in this little plastic sleeve. It wants to slide out right away. So we have some plastic on the back. So let me go ahead and peel that off right here. So you can see that all glass back panel still retained from previous Z phones. On the front, another piece of glass here protected by plastic. Really nice looking phone. I really like the feel of it already. Much smoother and simpler design on the side, so it generally feels a lot more comfortable in the hand than before. It's also thinner and lighter. You can definitely tell the difference. All right, so beneath the tray, we'll find our UK wallet adapter here, which obviously I can't use. Of course, it's Sony branded with a USB port along the side. Very different from what you would get from the US version. We also have our micro USB charging cable, pretty standard stuff. Now, we also have our standard Sony earphones. These are not noise canceling style. They're just pretty basic. They do have a remote control and microphone built in. So in terms of paperwork, we have the Sony Xperia Lounge flyer as well as our regulatory information and a startup guide in several languages here. So of course we have the English one and of course we're gonna go through this phone in great detail in this review. Now let's take a close look at the design of the hardware. So again, we have a 5.2 inch screen with smaller bezels this time, but of course you can see we have pretty large bezels at the top and bottom, but very thin bezels along the side, which makes for a fairly narrow phone. It feels a lot more compact than before. It's also much thinner than before, and generally the shape is a little more rounded and more comfortable to hold. So at the top, you'll find the earpiece, which acts as one of the front-facing stereo speakers. You also have your 2.2 megapixel front-facing camera, good for 1080p HD video. And then you have all your standard sensors, your proximity sensor and ambient light sensor. We also have a little LED notification light in the upper left corner. So at the bottom, we'll just find our front facing loudspeaker, which again is one of the stereo speakers. This also integrates the mouthpiece. So the microphone is also built in here. So if you look at the bottom this time, there's nothing here like there was on the Z2. Now on the right side, you'll find a lot more going on. So you have your power button and your volume rocker. The power button is kind of nice. It's nicely raised, very tactile, very easy to reach. You also have your flap covering the nano SIM tray and the micro SD card slot, which again supports 128 gig cards. Now to get that nano SIM tray out, I just use a little SIM ejector tool to kind of pull it out. And then you just push it in when you've loaded your SIM up. Also very common with Sony phones is a dedicated dual stage camera button. So you just press and hold it to activate the camera. It also acts as your shutter release. So you have to press it to lock focus and full press it to release the shutter. Now on the left side, we have our covered micro USB charging port. Now all these flaps on the left side and right side are made of metal. So they are consistent with the design and quality of the metal frame on the phone, which is very nice. We also have a charging dock. This charging dock works with certain Sony accessories. So if you want to bypass the covered micro USB charging port for charging, your phone, you can buy an accessory. And once again, we have a Sony phone with a lanyard port. It's a bit of a different design from the Sony Z2 that was integrated into the corner of the phone. This is a little higher up. Now at all four corners, you'll find these nylon bumpers. So the metal frame of the phone no longer completely wraps around the phone. The corners are protected by more shock absorbing materials. The idea here is that when you drop your phone with a metal frame, you're going to damage it, possibly cause damage to the screen, but with nylon, it's going to bounce or recover a bit more easily. Now at the top, you'll find a waterproof headphone jack and one of the microphones. 
Now, once again, on the back, we have an all glass back panel, which integrates NFC, as you can see the NFC target toward the center right there. And then we have that very impressive 20.7 megapixel sensor, which now has new optics for a wider angle view. We also have a new image processor, so image processing should be even better. And right below the camera lens, we still have a single LED flash. All right, so let's take a look at the software experience, which is pretty familiar to any Sony Z2 user. So on the lock screen, you can swipe up to launch into the camera app. Alternatively, from anywhere on the device, even if the screen is locked, you just tap and hold the dedicated camera key, launches the camera app. So again, if the device is locked, it will launch the camera no matter what. So it's very nice and handy to have that feature. Now I've also enabled a feature that just allows me to double tap the screen to wake it up, and I'll show you where that is under settings. You can swipe down to get to your notification panel along with your quick settings, as you can see, you can swipe between them. Now quick settings is customizable so you can select which setting you want here. So for example you can see mobile data, airplane mode, roaming, auto sync, and NFC which you can also just drag and drop here and you can rearrange them like so. But you can see all the ones that are available here. You have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, location, Wi-Fi hotspot, throw, which basically allows us to broadcast media to compatible wireless devices. So this is kind of similar to Apple's AirPlay. We're going to have to click done to use it. So it's kind of similar to Apple's AirPlay or Samsung's Quick Connect. Basically, it sees all the available wireless devices for streaming media, such as uh, photographs, video, audio, that sort of thing. We also have our brightness controls, which unfortunately forces us out of the uh, quick settings panel. And then of course you also have your, and as you can see when it disappears, you have to go back to it. You can also see you have adapt display like so. Now we also have a quick flashlight here. So again, a little LED flashlight on the back, which is very handy to have. We also have screen mirroring. So if you have a compatible screen mirroring device like a Samsung Smart TV, in my case, you can wirelessly broadcast the display and audio of this to that television, which is very handy. Now I can jump to any one of these settings panels just by tapping and holding on it. And you can see you get this little button here, which appears. So it takes you to the Wi-Fi settings. Now we also have lots of power saving measures under stamina mode. So if you tap and hold on it, it takes us to power management. So here you can see lots of options here. But right now I have the standard stamina mode activated. When I click that off, you can see it changes the estimated battery time for that. So you can see if I activate it, it tells us exactly what it's doing here. So nine days and 10 hours on standard stamina mode. And you can click on this to see exactly how it's behaving and you can modify some of its behavior as well. We also have low battery power mode. So if we activate this, when it hits 20%, it activates additional power saving measures. And again, you can tap on it to see exactly what it does or you can modify its behavior. And you can also adjust the threshold here from 20% to less or greater. Now we also have ultra stamina mode. So if we activate ultra stamina mode, you can see it brings us all the way up to 10 days or 18 hours and 12 days or 22 hours of standby time. This is actually somewhat similar to the ultra power saving mode on Samsung phones. So it significantly dials back performance, closes app, simplifies the interface and turns it to a grayscale screen. Well, not a full grayscale screen, but you'll see in just a moment here. So you get a grayscale background wallpaper. You get a simplified selection of apps. You get a simplified drop down shade with simplified quick settings here. If you want to leave this, just click ultra power saving or ultra stamina mode and it'll take you back to the standard view. All right, so let's take a look at our home screen. As you can see here, we have that nice carousel transition effect with that kind of 3D animated wallpaper in the back, which is really neat. You can tap and hold on the home screen to get to your editor. So you can see things like your available home screens. You can swipe through them on the top. You can select which one you want to be the home screen by tapping the little home icon in the upper left corner, or you can delete the home screen by tapping up here, or you can add a new one like so. You can see we have our widgets down here, so we can drag and drop widgets as we want. You can also add your apps from here as well. Then we have our wallpapers, so you can select your wallpapers, and then you have your themes. Now under themes, you can see these are basically background themes. So for example, I have the rainbow theme here, and you can see the available solid colors. So if you don't want the transition to change to different colors, you can select another solid color. You can also download additional themes here. So you can see there's lots of themes. A lot of them are tied to Sony properties like Sony movies, the Lego movie and that sort of thing. So if you want a specific theme, just click on it takes you to the Play Store. So as you can see, it's changed some of the layout designs, the buttons, and that sort of thing. Now we have our on-screen Android controls. If you tap and hold the Home button, you can swipe up to Google Now, or you can swipe up to the Xperia Lounge, which is really just Sony's kind of media store for purchasing, renting content. You can see what's available here, music, movies, games, and apps, and the PlayStation Game Store. So under recent apps, a pretty standard interface. You also have Close All, but you see Sony has added these small apps to it. These are basically windowed apps that float around when you're doing other things in the background. So for example, we have a little calculator that pops up. You can move this app around. You can't resize this specific app, but there are other apps you can open here that you can resize, such as this little web browser. 
texture here. So you can continue resizing this to a form that fits you and you can also move this around and continue doing other things in the background. Now you can open up quite a few of these apps and you can add more apps to this tray. So for example, if you want Chrome, just drag and drop it here. Gmail, as well as Touch Block, which when activated prevents you from accidentally triggering the screen when you don't want it to. So anyway, we can just continue opening these apps like so. And there you go, you have my email, you have a web browser, and you have all the apps you could possibly need on top of everything else you're doing in the background. Now if these are getting in the way, you can just kind of flick them to the bottom of the screen here, you have to grab the moving icon here. And as you can see here, when you flick them to the bottom of the screen, let me go to home screen so you can see it. They kind of turn into these little tabs here, which is kind of nice, and you can arrange them. Now you can position these little tabs anywhere you want, just hold it next to the screen's edge, and they automatically turn into those little tabs for you. Now you can also add additional small apps from the Google Play Store or turn your widgets into a small app. Of course, this is a Sony phone with Sony software. So we have the Walkman app, which integrates all of our music, which ties in with Music Unlimited for purchasing music. So you can see here, you have your home, your library, your playlist. You can see new releases on their unlimited store charts and that sort of thing. You can also see devices nearby, which you can connect to. But alternatively, if you're playing some music, you have this little throw icon up here, which again, detects the presence of available devices, such as my Samsung Smart TV and my uh, digital receiver here. So I can throw music to those devices, kind of similar to Apple's AirPlay. Now under album, you'll see all the photos and videos you've taken with your camera and you can see the things that are recorded in 4K are indicated. You can also swipe from the left to get to your camera roll. You can also swipe to see your folders on your device. You can see face detection here as well as locations and places. You can also see compatible devices from which you can throw your media. So again, you can see my Samsung Smart TV and my Pioneer receiver. And you can plug into Facebook, Picasa, or Flickr for feeding your images to your gallery. Now under movies, you'll find a lot more things than just movies here. So you'll find things like your podcasts, your videos. These are videos you purchased or downloaded to your device. You can see your foldered items, and then you can see videos taken with your camera. You can also swipe here to see the available devices nearby. And then of course, you also have throw options up here. So if you're playing a video, you can go ahead and throw it to one of the compatible devices nearby. And of course, you can also connect to the PlayStation Network to manage your account, reply to messages, and that sort of thing. Now, Sony has a pretty large ecosystem of apps. So in addition to the Walkman, Album, Movies, and PlayStation app, we also have What's New, which is part of the Xperia Lounge. Again, it kind of aggregates all the media into one spot. You also have Sony Select, which are games that you can download for your device. Now, we also have LifeLog, which is a really interesting app that pretty much keeps track of everything you're doing with your phone, from how much you're reading how many calories you burned, how many steps you've taken, how many hours you've walked or run, slept or biked, commuted or talked to people, how many photos you've taken, how much music and movies and gaming you've done, as well as, I guess, reading time and internet browsing. And you can add additional ones or unselect ones that are in here. So for example, if I tap on steps here, you can see my pedometer readings here. So again, about 900 steps for October 7th. I can see my weekly totals, my monthly totals, and my year totals. And then you can also see, if we go to my calories here, you can see how many calories I burn per day and how that is determined. You can see calories burned during exercise, not very much, and passive calories burned here. And again, you can select week and that sort of thing. So that's a really interesting app and you can actually see your timeline here as well and cycle through it and you can tap on it to see what's going on with each one. Now we also have this social life app, which is kind of similar to Flipboard. Basically it aggregates news and information and you can select which feed you want to add to this. So for example, you can add a URL or just add certain categories such as technology here. And you can also add what websites feed into that. So for example, nine to five Mac I would want and that sort of thing. And then you get all your news stories fed into one timeline. So it's kind of handy. And of course you have an FM radio built in. All you have to do is connect a pair of headphones to act as your antenna. Now the app store has one other little trick here. So if you swipe all the way to the right, you get to this little pop-out menu here. So you can search for apps. So for example, if you want to launch the Instagram app, just start typing in Instagram, finds it right away with a little pause there. And then you can swipe again to see your apps that are available for uninstallation here. So you can see very few of them can actually be uninstalled. All I have to do is hit the X to uninstall them. And if you want to return back to your normal view, just unclick it. You can also see your orders here. So you can see apps by your custom order, alphabetical order, most used and recently installed apps. 
Now, if you swipe here, you can see we have quick access to the Play Store or Sony Select Store as well. Now, under the settings panel, you can see this is searchable. So, for example, you can jump to anything you want just by searching for it. So, for example, if you want screen, it takes you to settings that include the word screen, such as sound, display, security, and that sort of thing. Now, under Xperia Connectivity, we'll find lots of options, such as our throw settings and screen mirroring. We also have our cast screen for Chromecast devices. We have our media server settings, so we can activate uh, share, uh, media sharing. So, DLNA certified devices can actually see the media on this phone. Uh, we also have Windows tethering, and then we have DualShock 3 and DualShock 4 setup. So if you want to set up one of your controllers to use for gaming on this device, you can. Now with the PS4 paired to our Sony Z3, you can actually see that when we press the PlayStation button, it actually connects directly to the phone instead of your gaming console. In fact, when you bring up your phone here, if you swipe down, you'll actually see here DualShock 4 connected in the drop-down notification shade. Now this actually acts as not only an, a gaming controller, but also a navigation controller here for the uh, entire system so that's kind of unique here and of course you can use this for gameplay Now under more, we have our standard array of options for NFC, our default SMS app, airplane mode, and that sort of thing. But one of my favorite things here is internet settings. So basically you can download the APN profile automatically thanks to the settings. So for example, I had an AT&T SIM here. It downloaded the MMS settings automatically and I was ready to go without having to actually plug in manually all the APN settings for use with my SIM. Now under personalization, we'll find things like motion. So this is, there's only one option here, but basically if you toggle this on, you have several options here. So if you want to answer a phone call, just bring the device to your ear, reject the call, just shake the device, ring or off, just place the device face down. So a lot of this is familiar from other devices like Samsung phones. We also have themes. And again, I showed you this earlier. You can select the theme you want or download ones you may want. Uh, you have your lock screen settings here, so you can change your wallpaper. We have clear view notifications. So when you swipe down to look at your notifications, they'll actually clear automatically for you once you've seen them. You also have manage notifications here. And so you can manage what apps push notifications and you can see apps broken down by downloaded, all apps, that sort of thing. We also have our status bar icon, so you can adjust what items appear in your status bar. So for example, if you don't want the Wi-Fi icon to appear, you can select that, or your GPS location, and that sort of thing. Under Home, you'll find that we have two launchers here. We have Simple Home, which will modify the launcher to a much simpler layout. So you can see a very simplified launcher here with big icons, just one page here with speed dial contacts down here. Now, call settings also reveal some interesting features here, such as answering machine. So you have a built-in answering machine on this device, which operates independent of voicemail. So if you want to record messages directly on this device instead of voicemail, you can do that. You can set up your own greetings, your own messages, and that sort of thing. We can also enable or disable microphone noise suppression. That's on by default. We also have our equalizer settings here, so you can adjust that. Speaker voice enhancement, you can enable. You can also enable slow talk to slow down the speech of the other calling party, which is something you probably want to do with me. But you also have your account setting here for Wi-Fi calling as well. Now, we also have a lot going on under sound. So under sound settings, we have audio settings, and these are basically all your equalizer options. So we have clear audio plus. If you want to check that, you have a few more uh, other options here. So you have sound effects here. So you can do surround sound. You can enable the equalizer here and manually adjust it if you want. You can also do S-Force front surround, which is kind of a equalizer that virtually reproduces realistic surround sound. So again, lots of audio. Dynamic normalizer will equalize the difference between high and low volumes. You can also select the type of head Headphone you're using specifically Sony headphones, so presumably it will adjust the audio profile for those headphones. You also have high res audio via USB, which is an option that works with USB connected devices such as DACs and that sort of thing. You can also adjust the mic sensitivity here. Now, under display, again, we reveal more features such as glove mode. So, if you enable glove mode, you can use your phone with gloved hands, which is very useful. We also have image enhancement. You can see you can toggle this off, but X reality for mobile is on by default, so it makes images clearer and more vibrant. But you can also select super super vivid mode, which makes colors stand out to get super vivid images. I'm just going to go with X reality. You can also adjust the white balance of the screen here as well, manually. We also have smart backlight control. So if you're handling the device and looking at a photo, it knows not to dim the display. So you can enable this. It's off by default. We also have that tap to wake up command, which is off by default. Again, that allows you to wake up the screen just by double tapping it. And it's definitely really quick and sensitive. We also have our notification LED light, which you can toggle on and off. Now, if you press and hold the power button along the side, you get to some options here, which includes a screenshot and screen recording. So this brings up this little floating widget, which you can move around, and you have several options here. So, for example, you can record both the front-facing and the screen at the same time. So I can kind of expand it, I can move it around, and that sort of thing, or I can pause it. 
and I can click record. So I can narrate what I'm doing. You can see what I'm doing on the screen as well as seeing me at the same time. So it's kind of interesting here. So we're gonna click that and I think we're done with that. So tap it again, click stop, there you go. Now, if you want to adjust some of the settings here, you can see that we can change the video quality from Full HD all the way down to VGA, and you can also change the landscape orientation here. So if you swipe down here, you'll see that we have our screen recording right there in the notification panel. What I'm doing. You can see what I'm doing on the screen as well as seeing me at the same time. So it's kind of interesting here. So we're going to click that. and I So you can see you got the audio of both the device and you as well. Now there are some UI tweaks from the Z2, like the size of the icons now much larger on the Z3, even though they share the same screen resolution. The folder icon is a bit different. In fact, when you drag and drop an item here, on the uh, Z2, it's a bit of a different interface. You get a little trash can icon on the Z2 versus a little X icon on the Z3. So very minor detail differences. Now with both the Z2 and Z3 set to maximum brightness, it's pretty clear that the Z3 is considerably brighter than the Z2. You also see it has a cooler color temperature. Now it's a very vivid display as well with that triluminous technology, which makes it a particularly vivid display, especially for IPS. Now this is more of a combination of IPS and AMOLED properties. So we have the bright IPS display, but the vivid colors of an AMOLED display. So really nice display and definitely one of the standout features of the phone. All right, so let's go ahead and activate the camera. I'm just gonna tap and hold the camera release button to activate the camera. Now I can take a photo just by pressing halfway to focus, pressing all the way to snap the photo. It's very nice to have this button on the side. All right, so of course you can also use the on-screen keys to take a photograph. You can also record video, which is really nicely stabilized here. Sony has excellent software stabilization here. Even if it doesn't have optical image stabilization, you can pause it. You can also take a photo while recording video as well. Now we also have our mode selector in the lower right corner. Basically, they call these camera apps, but there are modes that you select, including 4K right there. But you have things like time shift video for slow motion. You have time shift burst for uh, time lapse video. You also have manual mode for manually adjusting all the values on the camera. You have sound and photo for adding a soundtrack to your photo. Face in for including the rear facing camera in your main facing camera video as well. So we have this little thumbnail here. We can move around. This is very similar to Samsung's dual shot view. We also have background defocus to create a depth of field effect. And we have other things in here and you can download additional apps from the store as well. Now the camera app I wanna take a look at is 4K video. Now with 4K video, you do have digital stabilization here. So you just go to settings and you can turn it on. Now when you turn stabilization on, it's off by default. You can see it actually crops the image quite a bit. That's pretty standard stuff for electronic stabilization. Now, if you're in superior auto, this takes eight megapixel images, not 20.7 megapixel images. So if you want to manually select the resolution, you'll have to select manual mode, and then you'll have resolution options here. So you can see 20.7 megapixels. So as you can see here, of course, 20.7 megapixels is four by three, but if you want 16 by nine, you'll have to drop it down to 15.5 megapixels. Now, because Superior Auto only takes eight megapixel images, when you pinch in and out to zoom, you're actually cropping the sensor, not cropping the image. So you retain the quality of the image, which is quite nice. So the combination of great optics, great software, and a great sensor makes this one of the best smartphone cameras I've used to date. Definitely one of the best in the Android universe. So I'm definitely impressed overall with this camera, just like I was with the Z2, and this remains one of my favorite cameras to use. So you have great stabilizations thanks to Steady Shot. Even though it doesn't use optical image stabilization, it's really impressive stabilization. Definitely one of the best digital systems out there. It will be nice once they finally get optical image stabilization in this camera. Images are also sharp and clear with great color accuracy and just the right amount of exposure for low lights and highlights. So definitely one of the most foolproof cameras you can use, especially in Superior Auto. 4K video is also excellent, although I didn't have stabilization turned on when I was using the 4K for video recording, but it's still a fantastic camera for both audio and video recording. I'm definitely impressed overall. Now focus can be hit or miss with this camera, and it's definitely not the fastest AF system out there, but it does a pretty good job. All right, guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, testing out that front-facing camera on the Sony Xperia Z3, which also incorporates Sony Steady Shot feature, so you do have stabilization in this camera. Again, this is 2 megapixels, good for 1080p video at 30 frames per second. So, again, a pretty decent front-facing camera and good audio.
Now in terms of our Geekbench 3 scores, there's not a huge difference here. So you can see slightly better single core score on the Z3, but slightly better multi-core score on the Z2. Not sure why that is, could just be variations in the software. In terms of performance, this is definitely one of the quickest and smoothest performing skinned versions of Android I've used. This is very close to stock in terms of performance. And when you throw up a bunch of windows all at once, it does a really nice job handling it. I think that's thanks partly to the fact that the design of this system is pretty close to stock and they've added three gigs of storage which means it can handle quite a bit in the background. Now, battery life is pretty impressive here. So after one day and five hours of use, I'm down to 15%. Now, the screen was on for only a little over three hours of that time, but that's at full brightness. So you can see that's pretty impressive battery life for a phone that doesn't have a particularly large battery. Now for me, one of the biggest standout features here of the Z3 is the display. This is definitely unlike any display I've seen before. It's an LCD IPS display, but it has really bright, vivid colors. That's part of that tri-luminous technology that Sony has built in here. It's much more vivid and much brighter than last year's Z2. It's also much cooler in terms of its color temperature. They also have this X-Reality processing engine behind the display, which makes text look really sharp, video and images look really sharp. So it almost looks like you're looking at a display that's even higher resolution than the 1080p. So text and images and everything looks particularly sharp on this display and is definitely one of the best looking displays I've seen to date. Now unfortunately there is one big issue for me with this display and that is off-axis viewing. This doesn't have the best off-axis viewing uh, so it tends to lose color and brightness and distorts off-axis. That's thanks partly to the fact that this display is particularly bright so blacks tend to wash out in particular especially if you're looking at a movie but uh, when you're looking at the display in full brightness it's definitely one of the most vivid LCD displays you're going to see right now. Now the other big story here is audio. So we have those front-facing stereo speakers and a great headphone jack with a great processing that's going on behind the scenes to make audio sound really good. Now these don't sound as loud as the Z2 speakers and they definitely don't sound as good as the M8 speakers but they're definitely better than average. Now there's one strange thing about the volume controls on this phone. I have to constantly set it to maximum because any step below that and it's much quieter. So it seems like they need to adjust the volume controls a bit here. What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at what might be the design of the second generation iPad Air, expected to be announced next month in October. What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at what might be the design of the second generation iPad Air, expected to be announced next month in October. What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at what might be the design of the second generation iPad Air, expected to be announced next month in October. So, in the end, we're left with a phone with standout characteristics, with a great display, great camera system, great audio, great design and build along with a nice compact form factor as well as great battery life and it just happens to be water resistant so a lot of great features packed into this compact and great looking phone so that's going to do for me in this video thanks for watching and i'll see you again in the next one